So you guys are watching this video because you want to either get better next season, you want to place in states, you want to place in regionals, you want to beat your varsity guy, you want to improve over the next like six to eight months so that when you come into season, you're a new person. This is something very difficult. This is like if done right, you can change your whole game. But before we get into that, I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. Check out all my posts. Be there for the premiere. I, I'm in the live chat, so you guys can talk to me and stuff. Getting better in the off season really is an art and it really is a focus because in order to make the most out of your time, then you have to you have to be really honed into yourself. You have to be really, really selfish this summer and just think about yourself, think about improving your game, right? You see where you went this year, you see how far you got this year, and you wanna improve on that. In order to do this, in order to even begin to like actually improve yourself. You have to understand that to every single aspect of wrestling, there are levels. And not just, it's not like, oh, he's this level wrestler. There are multiple levels to everything you do. To every attack and every defense, there are levels, all right? And in my opinion, for an attack to be successful, for an attack to be successful with no resistance, it must be drilled three times more than your partner's defense is drilled. If you're trying to shoot on someone, let's say to get to level one of anything, this is completely arbitrary, you have to drill it a hundred times. If you drill the double leg a hundred times, right, and this kid drilled the double leg defense a hundred times, the odds of you taking him down are very, very slim because it is easier to defend than it is to attack. It's easier to react. It's like you have to react. You don't know when you have to attack, right? It's really easy to hesitate. It's like there's a lot of factors that go into your attack that like will affect it. Because it's easier to defend and stop someone from accomplishing something than it is to actually accomplish something, that's why the attack needs to be drilled so much more than your defense. That doesn't mean ignore the defense. That just means like this is how you're gonna take someone down. When the, when the coach says do five drills, you should be drilling as many times as you can until he says switch. If he says drill this five times, you should be doing, you should be trying to do it a hundred times. Okay, because there's gonna be kids in there that take a shot, they do the double leg, and then they stand up, stretch their back out, and they throw their arms up, and they're like, all right, ah. They waste like another 40, 50 seconds before they even get back into a stance, right? You wanna be able to fire off shots and drills and like ingrain that mental pathway into your head with as little time in between as possible. That means if you can fire up a shot every five seconds, do it every, push for four. This is how the greats train. This is how you improve rapid, right? By pushing yourself, by getting really tired, by pushing yourself mentally, by making your legs fail, by making yourself like work through pain. In order to hit a switch on someone, you're, like, the defense to the switch had to have been drilled three times less than your switch. So someone must had to have drilled lowering their shoulder and stepping in between your legs only like a third as much two thirds as much as you actually drilled at your switch attack. It takes a lot longer for someone to attack than it does for someone to defend, right? It takes a lot longer for you to shoot a single leg, pick it up in the air than it does for me to put a whizzer in and sprawl out, you know what I mean? Or it does for me to get my hips facing towards you, like to sprawl. It takes a lot longer for someone to decide a setup to level change and shoot than it does for me to feel a setup and level change and just like know, like anticipate where he's going to be attacking just based on where my hips are. Your attacks have to be drilled very, very heavily. This does not mean ignore your defenses. This does not mean ignore your defenses. But if you are if you find an attack not working in live, it isn't because it isn't good most of the time. It's usually because you haven't reached the level of your opponent. If you're not a big fan of drilling over and over and over again and getting yourself in extremely tired and like this re super repetitive motion, just like going to practice and drilling and drilling and drilling and pushing yourself. Okay, another way to go about, another way to improve rapidly and to like actually skip levels, to jump levels, not have to do as many reps, is by wrestling with much more difficult partners. Wrestling with, like if you've got an All-American like in a college close to you and you can go to the college and they'll let you practice with them, practice with them. You'll get the living shit kicked out of you. The living shit kicked out of you but you will get so much better. You will find so many flaws in your game. You will see, you'll be like, oh my God, every time I shoot, he gets underhooks. And then you'll look online, like the reason why they get underhooks is because your elbows aren't in. 
right? You're not shooting like this. This is a problem for me to this day. This is what happens. You're forced to look at yourself because the consequences of your mistakes are so grave. Like so, so, it, like it sucks so much to be, to do the wrong thing against a super high level wrestler because they have no mercy. And now if you don't have an, a super high level wrestler near you that can push you, that you can train with, then the next best option is to go to as many tournaments as possible, right? The more competitive the tournament, the better. If it's a national tournament, if you have people coming in from out of state, that's even better, right? If The more mat time you can get with other people will directly affect how well and how quickly you attack and defend everything, okay? Unless you have real competition with your partners, like I'm talking real, real, real competition, and by that I mean competition you're losing, right? It's a legit struggle to actually like do anything to these people. Then you'll never know your true potential for each move. Until you have to push yourself to the point where you can't push yourself any harder, you won't know your true potential. This is what happened to me. I was put into a program where I was wrestling against people who were a caliber, like who were multiple calibers higher than me. You know what I mean? There were much higher level wrestlers than I was. But being put in that pressure, being put in that system, being put in that team, being put against those people every day made me so much better, so much better. To the point where people who used to like challenge me, I would throw and put on their back, right? People who used to challenge me in high school, I would throw and put on their back in two seconds. Right, people who used to be quicker than me, people who used to be more agile, people who used to move around the mat, move around the mat quicker than me. Like when we go back into the room, I am an animal. I am an animal, and this isn't just like, and I'm not trying to brag, but this is like my own personal experience. When you go against someone way hard, like when you go against the best of the best, like the best of the best, that translates to so many people. Like once you train with someone that's already such a high level that they beat all these people and you start kind of like getting to their level, you start taking them down once a practice, maybe you hit a stand up and like they don't want you to stand up or you hit a switch or you hit a Gramby roll or something. Once you get to that point, the amount of competition that you can beat increases so much, so, so, so much. Like, like you go from, you can go from placing like fourth at districts to like placing third in state. You know what I mean? Like it can be so drastic just by changing your training partner and changing the resistance you go through. And now this same idea, this same idea of having to go full force is extremely true in wrestling matches, right? If you're not going through difficult wrestling matches, the amount that you can improve is, like you're limiting how much you can improve. You know what I mean? If you're only going to local tournaments or you're only going to tournaments where like you get first, then you're limiting how much you can improve, okay? and. Wrestling camps do the same thing, right? They put you with coaches who are a much higher level than your high school coach. Or they put you with training partners who are a much higher level than you, the training partners you have at home, and it makes you better. You guys rub off on each other. They teach you new things. You're put with new people and new pressure, right? When you're in your own team, it's really easy to not go as hard because of these kids are your friends. But when you're in a camp or you're on the mat somewhere, you don't care. You just want to win. You just want to get the two. You want to get you want to get your hand raised. You know what I mean? It like it doesn't matter and there's a different intensity. There's a different exhaustion for sure. So this off season, if you want to improve, you have to look at the level of each thing you do, right? Each move you do. How what level is your arm drag? What level is your elbow pass? What level is your slide by? What level is your high crotch? What level is your duck? What level is your double leg? Your single leg, your single leg defense, your double leg defense, your high crotch defense, your wizard, your your single leg sprawl, your double leg sprawl, your high crotch sprawl, how well do you circle, what level is your circle, right? All of these things you work at one at a time, one at a time and you just chop away at it, chop away at it, right? It takes a lot of time to become a high level wrestler, a lot, a lot of time, right? You have to be constantly not only adding new things to your arsenal and like learning new things, always be a student, but you have to always practice the things that you learned in the past, regardless of whether or not you think that you did it right or you like, I know how to do a double leg, right? That's something I hear all the time. You do not know how to do a double leg like Jordan Burroughs, okay? There's a reason why he is an Olympic gold medalist and you lose in the finals.
at no point in wrestling should you just write it off and just say, I'm good enough, right? That, like, I'm good enough at that. You should never write that off. You need to practice everything, everything, and be super repetitive, super precise. When you learn a new move, you need to do it slowly at first. You need to really get the, like, really get the motion, do it really slowly, you know what I mean? And then you speed it up. Right? These are issues that I see a lot. So focus on your level, focus on your partner, your partner's resistance, right? If your partner isn't resisting, you're gonna be poopy. Your own resistance and how often you attempt it in live, right? If you attempt something in live, if you drill something a million times and you never attempt it in live, the odds of you hitting it when shit hits the fan is like zero. You know what I mean? Because it's not gonna be an instant. You have to try new things when you're in live, when you're in practice, that is the time to try new things. And last thing, it's summer, boys. You guys don't gotta cut weight. It's only time to grind, right? You hang out with your wrestling family. You guys chill, go to tournaments. The big thing being is that there is no cutting weight. Use this time to get big. Use this time to get swole. Use this time to get stronger, right? The last, like, as much as technique is important, right? Speed, tenacity, and endurance are all things that will determine the outcome of at least one of your match. You got someone with all the endurance and all the speed in the world, but they quit in the middle of their third, like of their third attack, right? They hit a single leg, doesn't work. They hit a double leg, doesn't work. They hit a high crotch, doesn't work. And after the high crotch doesn't work, they just give up and they stop trying to like attack. They're gonna lose, you know what I mean? You have to go for that duck. You have to go for that high crotch again, or you have to go for that single leg again. If you take three seconds to take a shot, you'll get defended. Right? The speed is very important. It doesn't matter how many times you take a shot. If it's slow, it's gonna get defended every time. Right? If you get gassed after the third shot or after your third attack, then it's worthless. It's worthless. Your like your wrestling game is worthless if you don't have the endurance to push your technique. Okay? So don't just focus on technique. Don't just focus on becoming a higher level wrestler. Your level also is very dependent on those three things okay so if you guys like that video hit the like button hit the subscribe button i post a new video every monday wednesday and friday at 7 30 p.m check me out hit the bell um hit the bell button i answer questions in the live chat so you guys can like talk to me there but until next time i'll see you guys